click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject electromagnetic field theory in this subject we are now with the chapter number 11 that is plane wave reflection and dispersion up till now we have seen the plane wave reflection at normal incidence at the boundary surface separating the two dielectric mediums and the boundary surface which separates a perfect conductive medium from another general medium so now in the previous video along with the normal incidence we have seen the oblique incidence of the incident wave fronts we can say so a portion will be reflected back to the medium one and another portion will be transmitted into the medium two so here in this particular topic we have seen the snell's law the relationship between the reflection coefficient and that of the transmission coefficient so based on to this particular understandings let us take one problem so here we have the problem a uniform plane wave is incident from air on to the glass at an angle from the normal of 30 degree determine the fraction of the incident power that is reflected and transmitted for p polarization and s polarization glass has the reflect refractive index n2 is equal to 1.45 so this is our simple problem statement in this problem statement we have the incidence of this uniform plane wave from air so it means medium one has to be air so for air we can have the permittivity divided by uh, denoted by epsilon 0 the permeability denoted by mu 0 the constant value is known to us and the medium 2 is the glass medium glass material is there and for this particular glass material the refractive index value n2 is given to us so let us have first of all the diagram separating medium 1 from medium 2 so here this is the boundary surface we consider and here we have the medium one to be air so for air we can denote sigma one will be equal to 0 permittivity by epsilon 0 8.85 4 into 10 to power minus 12 that is farad per meter and mu 0 the permeability that is 4 pi into 10 to power minus 7 it is in henry per meter now the medium two is glass medium we are not directly provided the epsilon or mu or the conductivity value so here we have the refractive index of this medium n2 divided by 1.45 so this is not the intrinsic impedance this is simply the refractive index now we have this uniform plane wave and that is incident at this particular boundary making the angle with the normal of 30 degree so in this particular diagram we make this particular line perpendicular to the boundary surface hence we call this to be the normal denoted by capital n to n line now the incidence angle is of 30 degree so we make this particular incident ray here so this particular angle is of 30 degree now this much is the given detail so we expect a portion that is reflected back and that is transmitted to medium 2 by having the corresponding angles of the angle of reflection the angle of transmission now further we are asked determine the fraction of incident power that is reflected transmitted for p polarization and s polarization in the previous chapter that is chapter number 10 uniform plane waves we have seen the last topic that is wave polarization thereupon we have seen the types of polarization that was decided based on to the uh, trace of electric field intensity vector whether it is of linear type or electrical uh, elliptical type so linear type had the two types that is i have uh, denoted them by the vertical and the horizontal one that was with respect to the ground plane here we can have the p polarization and s polarization to be the same things p polarization is the parallel polarization we can say and s polarization is the perpendicular polarization only the notations have been changed here so for these two types of polarization we will be applying the snell's law that we have learned for this particular topic and other details for the oblique incidence of 
reflection and will be checking the reflected portion and the transmitted portion so for that purpose we first of all use here the snell's law so a portion will be reflected here so the snell's law for the angle theta to the angle of reflection here we can say so shall be given by sine inverse of here it will be the sine of angle of incidence and that is given to us that is 30 degree divided by the refractive index uh, of the medium 2 that is glass medium so here we have 1.45 so this will give us the angle the angle of transmission so theta 2 will be equal to 20.2 degrees here now for p polarization if you write p polarization here we have intrinsic impedance in medium 1 for p polarization given by eta 1 into cosine of 30 degree the angle of incidence now the medium 1 is the air as we go into the diagram we have the air for air we have the intrinsic impedance eta 1 and that is given by exactly under root mu 0 divided by epsilon 0 is equal to 120 pi or you can approximate to you 377 ohms for both the cases we have to put ohms therefore eta 1 we substitute 377 in multiplication with cosine of 30 degree will be 0 0.866 so that will result eta 1 for the p polarization will be equal to 326 ohm now if you have the similar intrinsic impedance for medium 2 so it shall be eta 2p that will be given by eta 2 in general into cosine of it will be 20.2 degrees so this becomes 377 upon 1.45 as the material is glass material and we obtain it along with the cosine of 20.2 will be 0 0.938 so we shall obtain this answer to be 244 ohms the impedance so here we have the impedance in the medium 2 for p polarization will be obtained 244 ohms so we have the impedances for medium 1 as well as for medium 2 so using the formula to obtain the reflection coefficient gamma sub x r the reflection coefficient can be written eta 2 minus eta 1 upon eta 1 plus eta 2 or eta 2 plus eta 1 the addition of the two and that two both for the parallel polarization the p polarization so we shall obtain the reflection coefficient gamma suffix r will be obtained as it will be 244 minus 326 divided by the addition of the two so 244 plus 326 so this results into minus 0 0.144 so reflection coefficient is the ratio of reflected power to that of the incident power we can say so if reflection coefficient is in the terms of power we can have the portion that was reflected or the fraction of incident power that is reflected given by the ratio pr divided by p incident so that is nothing but the magnitude of this particular square so reflection coefficient square will be there so it should be 0 0.021 so this much of portion is reflected reflected for p polarization so this is for part a now along with the reflected portion we are asked what is the portion transmitted therefore if you take the ratio that is pt with respect to p i and c the formula will be 100 percent minus this much of so 1 minus the reflection coefficient magnitude square will give us the value 0 0.979 so this much of portion is transmitted so with these two values we are covered with the reflected and the transmitted portion for 
the p polarization so for part a the reflected as well as the transmitted portion we have determined so these are the answers 0 0.021 and 0 0.979 now we require s polarization the reflected and transmitted portions so for obtaining the values of s polarization the perpendicular polarization here we can have the intrinsic impedances for the corresponding polarization given by eta 1 into sec of the incidence angle that is 30 degree so it shall give us the value that is the impedance in general that is 377 for the air divided by it is 0 0.866 so this shall become 435 impedance in terms of ohm similarly for medium to for s polarization we obtain eta 2 into sec of the angle 20.2 degrees so this shall become 377 divided by 1.45 in multiplication with 1 upon 0 0.938 so this results into the value 277 ohm so we have the impedances into medium 1 and medium 2 for the s polarized waves therefore the coefficient reflected coefficient for s polarized wave again represented by gamma suffix r shall be equal to 277 minus 435 divided by 277 plus 435 so this will give us minus 0 0.222 so knowing the reflection coefficient for s polarized wave we can have the portion of reflected so gamma suffix r the magnitude has to be squared it will give us 0 0.049 so this much of portion is reflected and the transmitted one will be obtained by 1 minus gamma s square will be obtained to 0 0.951 so this much of portion is transmitted so with these two values we are finished with part b also so this way for s polarization the reflected and transmitted portions are given into the percentages uh, you can also talk about so these are the values for reflected and transmitted so with this particular problem i hope it is very much clear the plane wave reflection at oblique incidence angle in the next video we shall take the next topic that is the total reflection and total transmission of obliquely incident waves so here a part was reflected and some part was transmitted so there upon the cases will be either to have total reflection or total transmission so for getting such more information onto the subject electromagnetic field theory you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you